Hi, everyone. So I'm Mathieu Bourget. Um, I will uh, be uh, teaching the module three, uh, which is based on genome alignment um, in, the, in, the, in this uh, workshop. Uh, so, uh, so as a reminder, um, all the content of the workshop of the workshop is under the Creative Commons uh, license, which means that you can uh, you can share, you can reuse, you can modify at the moment that the content stay um, under under the same uh, license. And at the moment that you uh, cite uh, people that uh, that have been involved in creating the content. Um, so today we'll talk about um, genome alignment. Um, so the main idea of this um, of this topic is to um, to make you learn about how we do alignment. So what are the te the terminology we use when we do alignment? Um, to become more familiar with the files that we generate. So um, the idea is to go from a fast queue file, so what we get from a, a raw sequencer to a, a high quality BAM file, which will be ready for um, variant uh, analysis. Um, so it's important uh, uh, in, um, in cancer analysis uh, that you understand that there's cancer related challenges that will impact uh, what we are doing, uh, especially how we, are, we align the, the data. Uh, and so everything, uh, every, ob every of, the, of this objective is uh, linked to how we can, you can run uh, the first steps of a tumor pair pipeline. So how you can run the first step of uh, DNSSEC um, analysis of cancer samples. Um, so my talk will be dividing four main um, parts. Um, uh, first, I will give you a, sm a small introduction about um, why we are looking at uh, variant in cancer and what are the main challenges. Then I will present the pipeline we are we, we have developed um, in a in a summarized way, and then we'll go into a step by step um, um, approach of this pipeline. And then in the practical, after the conclusion, when we do the practical, we'll do the step by step. But this time you, you will do it really um, on, the, on data. Um, so let's start. Um, so we, uh, we are interested when we work in cancer, uh, mainly to uh, discover uh, what are the uh, abnormality that we observe uh, in a cancer sample compared to, uh, to normal and, and compared to uh, healthy cells. Uh, what, what are the, the, abnormal, the abnormalities? So um, this mostly are genetic abnormality. There is also epigenetics, but we will not cover that in, in that um, in, in that talk. And uh, what people also want to to see when they when they are where, when they are studying cancer is to see how this abnormality uh, evolve um, with an history of the tumor. Um, and so in these two main points, it's really important to have a really uh, accurate way to detect um, uh, genetic abnormalities or genetic variants. So it's why uh, when, we'll, when we use DNA, like it's, really, it's really important to have a good uh, variant calling. But to, to, do, to do good variant calling, you need to have a good uh, mapping and alignment of, of, your, uh, of your data. Otherwise, uh, you, will, uh, you will bias and create technicality in what will you observe after your, your variant calling. Um, and also, you, you want to, to have the better, best set of calls in order to be able to, uh, see, to see what are the, the, the pathway, what are the biological functions that are uh, affected by the, the variant you, you will be calling. Um, so, so what are the source of problem uh, specific to cancer sample uh, when we want to do variant calling? One of the first source of problem is the clonality, which means that when you take a sample to analyze, uh, you take a, 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 a slice of the, of the tumor uh, at a given time point of history. So if I'm taking uh, here, you can see that mostly I will see um, variants that come from um, the light blue um, clones, and almost I will not be able to see variants that come from um, the, the dark blue um, um, uh, clones. If I take uh, a, a slice at the later um, time in, in, the, in, the vari in the tumor uh, evolution, I will say that the clones that, the, the clone that, were, that were light blue it will be almost no more present, and I will only see um, the dark blue one and not the purple, not the, not the, the pink one. So um, the fact that 
the, the, the tumor is not uh, one set of homogeneous set of cells, it's a mix of, of clones uh, give troubles because uh, will not be in the, in the traditional way of calling variant uh, because um, the, the, the amount of evidence to call variants will depend on the, 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 how the different clones are present in your sample. So it's, a, it's what we call the clonality. So it's a, a factor we need to take into account when we, when we, um, when we try to, to do um, variant analysis in cancer. Another set of uh, challenge uh, we need to, um, to take into account is the purity of the data because uh, when we uh, get some, when you do something of the, of the tumor, uh, there's always a mix of tumor and normal cells because uh, it's not always, it's not, it's never 100% uh, tumor cells uh, in, in your sample. So you need to, to be able to go in, into, your, um, in, into your data and, and have an estimation of what the proportion of tumor cells, because uh, it will also reduce the amount of evidence you will see for, for doing uh, variant calling. Another source of problem, which is more um, a general source of problem that is not specific to, um, to tumor, um, is uh, um, uh, mapping sequencing error. Uh, and um, this is also um, uh, increasing tumor because usually the quality of the, of the, of the sample is, is a bit under what you have generally when you uh, sample blood or other uh, type of tissue. And it will, uh, it, it will reinforce the amount of sequencing and mapping error you will face. So usually we see this error in, in GC rich region, we see this error in, in uh, repeats, in haplotypes, uh, and so on. So as you can see, it's an example, when you have this kind of highly uh, repetitive region, you can see that uh, the mapping that we can observe in IGV will be, uh, will be um, drastically uh, reduced, which can uh, make it uh, harder to do um, variant calling. So it's important to, to, to understand that uh, when we talk about um, abnormality in cancer, usually we are trying to uh, look for heterozygote because um, usually you expect to see um, that the tumor um, uh, related variants that, that will be interesting will be some new variants that affect uh, regions that are uh, not already um, um, heterozygote. So it's usually um, homozygote reference region uh, that will become uh, heterozygotes. So it's why it's complicated and why it's important that the, num the number of evidence you, you, you need to see to detect a, a variant uh, as a real impact. Because when you look for homozygotes, uh, the number of evidence is always uh, large. But when you look for heterozygotes, uh, at maximum, you will have around the, the, the half of your um, reads as uh, evidence. So if you now include uh, clonality, purity, uh, and uh, issue with mapping, this will drastically uh, reduce the amount of evidence. So it's, it's really the main point of, and the main challenge when we do uh, cancer analysis. So to do that, um, we have uh, developed um, a pipeline uh, since now uh, many years, because we, are, we have worked on, on several large uh, scale project, cancer project. And the, the last version of our pipeline was ba based on the on the project uh, on an ongoing project which is which is called Profile, uh, where we um, uh, we try to uh, analyze uh, children, adolescents, or young adults uh, that are hard to treat. So the, the main idea is we have this uh, we are in connection with um, uh, with oncologists, and the sun the sun sample where uh, they are resistant to a standard treatment. So the main idea of this uh, pipeline uh, is to collect uh, DNA uh, from the tumor, from the blood, and to collect RNA. So I will not cover uh, this part uh, today. Um, so, the, so in that pipeline, we have two approaches. Uh, the first one is a, is a fast pass approaches where we focus only on, on region of, um, of the genome where we know there's uh, potential um, genes that are involved in, um, in cancer um, development. And that is to do really to provide when we receive the, the, the sample out of the sequencer in a 24 hour to be able to uh, send a, a, a report uh, to MD uh, experts that will try to find actionable targets to try to adapt, uh, to, to adapt the therapy of the, of the patient. On the other hand, we do a full um, analysis of the sample 
um, in order to have a, a, a really a larger view of all the variation, all the, the, the uh, abnormality uh, in this tumor. And we do it more for a research purpose. So today I will more focus on about, about uh, this, this, this section uh, on, the, on the full world genome analysis. Um, so here it's a, it's a kind of simplified um, uh, workflow of the pipeline. So the idea is to go from FASQ file, um, so to, 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 to generate high quality FASQ files, to do the alignment, then to uh, get a high quality alignment, and then to do the variant calling, and then to filter, and then to annotate. So this is a full, the full uh, pipeline that we are using. Today, we'll focus uh, only on the first part here, this square, where we go from uh, FASQ file to high quality um, uh, alignment file. Um, so just to give you a more um, idea of, of the pipeline, so this is a real workflow of the pipeline, so it's a bit more complex from what I, I show you uh, in the previous slide. And uh, we'll do um, this uh, uh, first uh, eight step in the, in the pipeline. So now we will go and look at that more, more in details. Um, so just to, to let you know, um, when you do this kind of analysis, uh, you need to have a, a real compu computing infrastructure uh, to do that, because um, we are talking about a um, large file with um, uh, uh, hundreds of millions of, of reads. So you cannot do that on your, uh, on your uh, computer. So either you need to have access to an HPC server or cloud services, uh, but uh, don't try to make it work on your, on your computer. You need also to have a, a large um, uh, storage uh, system because um, the size of the file is usually really large. As you can see, the final BAM you will have could range from 250 to 500 gigabytes per uh, sample. Uh, and you, we usually work in a paired mode where we have for each sample, we have a, a normal and tumor uh, sample. So it could take really um, a, a large space. If you, for example, a um, couple of uh, years ago, when we did the kids kid project, we analyzed 100 tumor normal pair and our final storage was uh, around uh, eight, uh, 80 terabytes. And during the processing, because each step you generate files, temporary file during the processing, we need uh, 200 and 400 terabytes. So um, this is really mainly the, to show you that really don't try to do that on your, on your own computer. You really need um, access to uh, high performance computing uh, resources. And if you don't have this access, uh, the first thing before starting to think about analysis is to get this, this kind of access. In terms of time, our pipeline is take approximately um, uh, 36 uh, hours uh, to process every every samples. So, as I said previously, um, the main point of uh, of the, this module is to be able to show how we can start from FASQ files, the, the input file you you will get from your uh, sequencing center, to um, high quality uh, alignment. Uh, ready to do variant calling. So let's talk about FASQ file. So um, FASQ, FASQ file are, the, as I said uh, just before, are the file you usually receive uh, from your sequencer or your sequencing center. Um, if in recent way, and usually when you do a content analysis, you will do pair end analysis. So which means that you have your uh, DNA fragment, uh, all the DNA fragment, and you have cut it in pieces and you will sequence the two extremities of uh, the, um, the fragment. So you will have two reads per um, bi biological fragment. So for um, this type of analysis, you will receive two set of file, one set of file, which will uh, contain all the reads that uh, come from one end and all the reads that come from the other end of the, of the, of the DNA fragment. So these two files will be synchronized. So the order in which uh, the, the, the read are, are placed in, in the file will be the same in the, in the two files. So you can, so you can easily uh, find that the first read will correspond, the first read uh, in file one will correspond to the, um, the read from the same molecule in the, in the read two file. And it, in all these files, um, the structure of the file will be the, will be the same. So it will be 
uh, four lines per, uh, per read that have been generated. So the first line corresponds to the header, uh, which gives you the name of the, uh, the name of the reads. So this is this part here. Usually the name of the reads come from uh, the name of the sequencer plus of other kind of, um, of um, uh, technical uh, worth naming. So, and then you've got here uh, a part here which give you the position of this read on the flow cell. And then it's, it's not mandatory, but some um, sequencer or some pipeline will give you at the end, it will tell you if the read is read one or read two. Uh, the second line will give you the real um, sequence that the sequencer have generated for this for this read. The third line will be um, a plus or a plus following by another either, which would be similar to this one, except that the add sign will be changed in the in the plus. Why we have this uh, third line is because originally um, the, the the sequence why for each sequence it was given in two files one for the sequence one for quality but um, um, now a long time ago we decided to to put everything together in a, in one file so we have merged the, the two formats into one so it's why there's a remaining second either here and if you look at all data all data you will see that there is a second either but all new response will just have a plus sign. And the last line, uh, which is a kind of a weird uh, line where you have a, a mix of symbols. You can see here, it's, it could be uh, numbers, it could be symbols, it could be letter, uh, give you the quality of each basis. So you, can you will tell me, but how, how can we get quality from that? It's just that quality is measured as a number, um, but we cannot put number here because um, as we have one base, we do, if I put, for example, 40, then 30, so I will have 4030. Zero, zero, I cannot say if, if the first base is related to 4, to 40, zero, to 403. Zero, so the idea is to have um, um, uh, one, um, one character to encode uh, the quality. So we use uh, the ASCII characters, uh, which could be translated into numbers. Um, so if you take each character, you can translate into a numbers and then it gives you the value of the quality that have been measured. So when we talk about base quality, as I said, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a number, it's a FRED score. So you will see a FRED score is a, is a, is a type of measurement that will, will, uh, you will see frequently in, um, in a genomic analysis. So the FRED score uh, is uh, minus log 10 a probability. Uh, and the probability will depend on which, uh, which value you, you are looking at. In case of base quality, uh, it's minus, minus log 10 of the probability that the base that have been called have been wrongly called. So it's the probability that you have an error in your base column. So to give you an example, if I take a base quality of 20, it means that I have 1% chance of, uh, er of error. So 1% chance that the base I called is wrongly called. If I take a, a base quality of 30, it's 0.1% uh, and so on. So when you will see all the, I would say quality value, like base quality, mapping quality, all this kind of, um, of um, quality value, it will be uh, given at a FRED score using the same approach of minus log 10 of a probability. So when we get this base quality, so the first line of each, of each um, read in the FASTQ file, what we can do is to look at this uh, quality uh, in, our, in our data set. Because it's really important to understand that when you get the data from the sequencer, the data is not perfect. There are some errors, there's some uh, issue in the data and you need to, to check your data first and to, uh, to only keep the high quality uh, data for your analysis. Um, so what we usually do, is we, we are generating this kind of plots where you see here, um, each, uh, each uh, uh, box represents um, the distribution of the base quality at each cycle. So you probably have, have seen how the uh, data is generated with the Illumina, which you cycle to, to, to create each basis. So each cycle, so for each cycle, all reads have been add one base. So we take all the reads at the first cycle and, and we'll look 
at uh, the overall quality of, of, all the, um, of all the reads in your sample. So as you can see, uh, usually the quality um, starts quite high, then the machine starts to calibrate. So the quality increase and then the quality uh, uh, slowly decreased all along the, the, the sequencing. It's due to the fact that when we look at Illumina, Illumina data, there's uh, what we call um, uh, unfazed data. So the more cycle you do, the more uh, reads that are incorporated based in advance or late, generate uh, uh, lower quality in the, in, the, in the cluster and lower quality in the base that is called. So it's a traditional um, a pattern that we saw in the, in the short read is that you have a quality that, that, that starts really good, that increase a, increase a little bit, and then it's slowly decreased towards the end of the read. And at the end of the read, sometimes you still have good quality, but sometimes you have a really uh, lower level of quality. So it's important to look at that, and it's important to uh, take that into account in your, in, in your data and in your analysis, because if you, if you let um, low quality bases, you will create a false, um, false positive um, variant. Another QC that we are doing, we are looking, what we do, we look at the uh, um, composition for each cycle, the composition in terms of, of bases. Uh, so you expect to have, for example, um, the, so you have the composition. So each line represents a, a given specific type of, um, a, a, of base. So A, C, G, uh, or T. And you look over all your reads, what is the composition? So um, this example is not the best one for for, for this um, for, for this um, workshop because it's based on the on the Arenasec data. Uh, it's why we have um, uh, a weird pattern at the beginning, and then we have everything at uh, twenty five percent, which means that if we take all every reads and and we look and we count all the bases, we find approximately twenty five percent of C, twenty five percent of G, and, and so on. So you don't you should not expect that. Uh, in world genome data, because um, you know that the, the, the genome is not 25% uh, of GC. So you should, it should match what your organism have in terms of um, GC content. Another QC that we are doing is to look uh, for known sequence. So when we generate um, a library for sequencing, we add a non-genomic sequence at the extremity of the, of the reads. So we don't want that in our, in our data because we don't want to, to include the sequence that could uh, create artificial um, uh, vari variation uh, in our data. So we know all the sequence that are, that are, that are used by Illumina and other type of, um, of um, sequencer. So what we can do, we can look for this sequence and to, to estimate the, the amount of data we have in, the, in, the, in, our, in, in our reads. And if we detect some, then we'll, we'll have to remove them. We can also look for uh, duplication. Um, so it's important to look for duplication because uh, you don't want to um, have uh, several times the same, um, the, the, the same uh, original molecule that, you're, that is representing your data. Uh, but I will come back later on, on why it's important to look at that. So here we generate, a, um, we generate a, uh, an estimation to be able to see, okay, is my data good or not? In that case, 14% will be not good. So I will probably call the, 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 the genome center to say, what have you done? Um, it's a really high number of duplicates. Another QC that we are doing, um, usually it's, um, we take a, a small number of reads, small, like 100,000 uh, 100, of reads, and we blast them again as a NR database. And then we'll look what is the organism that is it. So if you are looking in human and you've got these results like that, and you say, oh, most of my reads uh, um, match with a, with a mouse, then it's problematic. And you don't have what you, what you, ex what you expect to, to, to receive in your sample. So you can then either check what you have done, if you have done the, if you have, um, done, uh, the library yourself or what the, the, the genome center have, have done uh, and if there's any mix up in your, in your data. So when we have looked at the fast queue and evaluate the quality, uh, most of the time, as I say, the sequencer is not, the, sequ the sequencer are not, are, not perf are not perfect and you will have to, to, you will have to do some uh, action on your, on your fast queue uh, to remove uh, the lower quality um, region of your reads. 
So it's what we call trimming. So the, the first step that we are doing after checking quality is the trimming. So how we do that? So there's many uh, tools to do that. As we use Trimomatic, and today we'll use Trimomatic. So um, what we do, we first look, as I say, for adapters. So the non sequence that are added at the extremity of the read. Because when you sequence your read, if the, if the size of the read is, the, the size of the fragment, sorry, is shorter than the size of the read you are sequencing, you will sequence your fragment and then you will start to sequence uh, non-genomic sequence that you have add to your, to your um, sequence. So as I say, we know the sequence. So the first thing that we do we in, when we do the trimming is to look for the sequence. And we, if we find the sequence, then we remove them from the read. Uh, the second thing that we are doing is to um, only keep data and bases uh, with high quality. So for all the read after um, adapter have been removed, uh, we start from, from all the last base of the read and we look at the, at the quality. If in a base, the quality is under a given result, uh, for example, uh, in our case, it will be a, 30, uh, a base quality of 30, so 0.1% of error, then we remove the base. And we, and we jump to the next base. If the base is still under 30, we remove the base and next jump to the, and jump next to the, to the next base. And so on until we arrive uh, on a base which has a quality uh, higher than the, the result we, uh, we, we have set. So, so you can see, uh, sorry, in my slide, the, we don't see the last point, but I will, I will explain it. So you can see that this first part will remove part of your read. The second part will also remove some bases on your read. So what we done, the last filter that we do is to look at the remaining length of the reads. And if the length of the read is under a given um, result, as we use like uh, 30 or 50, depending on what we, depending on what was the original size of the reads, um, if there is a read after the, the two um, quality um, check and cleaning is under this uh, threshold, then we discard the read saying, okay, the read is too short to be uh, interesting for us. Excuse me. Yes. I didn't understand the necessity of removing those adapters. Why should we remove them? Because uh, at the end of the reads here, for example, uh, you could have a base here, which is part of the adapter, and which when the read will be aligned, it will be aligned until the genomic part, and maybe the first couple of base uh, could be aligned to the, the genome, saying, okay, this, this is base uh, represent a variant because it's not what we, sh what we observe in the, in the reference sequence. But it's normal that it's not what we expect in the reference sequence because the real genomic sequence you have stopped here and after that is uh, it's synthetic sequence that we have added. So we don't want to include in the read this synthetic sequence uh, because it will appear as a as difference from the reference. And what you want to um, identify in your analysis is what are the, the region uh, where we see difference of uh, difference between the reference and your and your samples. So you will create fail, fake um, fake variant with the presence of this uh, of this sequence. Thank you. And I have another question. If you remove those um, bases with lower quality, can it cause a deletion, something like that, for example? And uh, no, because uh, we because we always remove that off starting from the end of the read. So, oh, okay. so, so we, we, we will okay. yeah we will not remove uh, some base in the middle of the read, where in that case is. If you do it just removing without marking that the base is no uh, uh, a no a known base or unknown base, yes, it, it it could create deletion. But it's not the case as we only uh, work starting from the end of the read until we stop to to do the trimming. Same thing for the adapter. You start from the end of the read, so the read starts here. The end of the read is there. You start from the end. If you see adapter at the end, you will remove, so your read be, will become shorter. But still. In a in a in a in a uh, vertical integrity here, and if I still go there because I'm removing a set of bays uh, due to quality like like this, I will still have this sequence in one set which is uh, um, which have a um, their genomic integrity. Okay, 
and it will not cause um, the uh, insertion or deletion in, 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 the, in the case. Thank you, Sam. So um, as I say, for the trimming, we'll use Trimomatic. Um, it's a choice because we, we used to, to use that, but um, uh, as for every step, many other tools exist and are really good to do that. Um, so if in your future analysis, you prefer to use another tool than uh, Trimomatic, don't worry, that, that, that's totally fine. So when we have done the cleaning, the next step is to do the alignment. Um, so when we do alignment, what we want to do is to find uh, the best location of uh, your reads. Why I say best and not the true? Because um, in the genome, the genome is still not perfect. Uh, I don't know, I, I, there's quite recently, they, they say that they release a, a full version, but I didn't have a look uh, to, the, to the sequence yet. But until you use that, uh, the genome is not perfect. There's missing part. There's repeated regions that are usually shortened uh, or, or, or put only in one location, which makes that the alignment will not be perfect. So you want to find the best um, location of your, of your read. So the, the challenge is that your genome is a really long stretch of letter. So it's uh, 3 billion letters and uh, your reads are uh, hundreds of millions of string of 100 or 150 uh, base pair long. So you need to replace all this uh, piece together. So it's a kind of real big um, uh, puzzle challenge. And why is it complicated? It's because you don't want to uh, do only exact matching. So you don't want to say, okay, I, I will only keep the one that really match my reference because as I say, the main goal is to find what are the difference between your reference and your sample. And what are, these different, what are these different that are related to cancer? So you really need to tolerate not exact matching. So when you do that, you will include biological variants, which is what you're interested, in, but you will also include sequencing errors and other type of error in your data. And the main challenge is that you need to be permissive to that error, not too much, uh, but enough to let real biological variant to be in, and then to be able to decipher between uh, error and uh, variant. So to do, to do that, um, there was many uh, algorithms that have been developed. Um, the one that is uh, mostly used is a Burroughs Wheeler Transformer approach, which is the best balance in terms of speed, memory, and accuracy. Uh, for sure, for example, I would say using um, um, an approach like BLAST uh, would be better in terms of accuracy, uh, but try to, to blast uh, hundreds of millions of, um, of sequence and uh, you will see that you will launch your job and then you can go in vacation for a couple of weeks or months. And then when you come back, if you're lucky, your job will be, will be complete. So the idea we, is to try to find an, an equilibrium between um, um, a speed, so to be able to do this task in, in, in hours with a good accuracy. So um, th this, uh, this um, approach is the one that, um, that have been shown as the most performant. And the mapper we'll use is uh, called BWA. Uh, but many, uh, as for the other, uh, for, the, for the trimmer, many other tools exist and many other tools provide good aligner. So when you do your alignment, uh, you will generate file, uh, which is called BAM or SAM. Um, so this file is used to store the alignment. So the BAM file is a binary version. It's what we usually use. And the SAM file is a, is a text file. So this is really large file. As I say, BAM file uh, could be uh, several hundreds of gigabytes. So SAM file will be uh, even more bigger. So it's why most people use BAM, but SAM and BAM are, are really the same. So compared to the FASTQ file, um, a BAM file uh, will store uh, an alignment, so uh, one end of the read, in one line. In the FASTQ file, we are using four lines here, we, we use uh, one line. Um, so here's the format that, that we use for in, in, the, in the BAM file. So how this line is uh, created. So the first column of the, of the file, the first part, gives you the read name. So this, the same as you've seen in the, in the FASTQ either. Then you've got a flag 
uh, which describe how the alignment went in terms of a specific physical um, component. Like, for example, is my read, is my read one and read two um, uh, paired? Um, uh, sorry, match and uh, in the same chromosome, for example. So, is my read is really paired? Uh, is the two read are in the in the same strand or in different strand? So, all these kind of uh, really um, uh, physical description of your alignment. Then you've got uh, two columns. The first uh, tell you which chromosome uh, the read is aligned, and the second tell you the first base of the read. Uh, what is the position of the chromosome of the first base of the read. Then you have a quality uh, value. So it's a Fred score as previously. Uh, so, my, um, so minus log 10 of a probability. In that case, it's the probability that the read uh, is, do, is not mapped correctly. So you can see here 60 is really a high um, quality of, um, of the mapping. Then you've got another um, uh, column which describe you how your read is mapped in terms of physically uh, mapped. So it's what we call the cigar stream. So it, in that case, it, it tell me there's, there are 76 match. So which means that my read was 76 uh, base long and all the base have been located to the genomes. So a match means that the base have been, posi uh, have been position on the genome. It don't mean that the match, uh, it don't mean that the, the base is the same as in the reference. It means that it's seeing that in this read, in this read, the read at this position correspond to, um, should be located in front of this read in the, in the reference. It do not check at all if the, read, if the base is the same or not. The only information it will give you if, if is there any uh, insertion or, or deletion? It will tell you, okay, I've matched, for example, 30 bays, then I have created deletion and I have, I have matched the other set of, of bases. Then you've got two other columns that tell you the mate, so the, the second read, the, the mate, so read two if you, if you are um, working with a, a read one or read one if you are work, working with read two. And it tells you what are the position of the mapping for this other, other, for the mate. So if you have the equal sign, it means that the read have been uh, aligned on the same chromosome. Uh, if there's another number, it means that the read have been aligned on, on a different chromosome, which corresponds to the number given. And then it gives you the first base of the alignment of the other, of, of your mate. Then what it gives you is the intersite, so the distance between the two extremity of your, of your reads. Then you have the sequence in uh, term of bases, and then you have the base quality. After, after that, you've got other fields uh, that are um, aligner dependent. It's why I, I will not, I will not um, go in detail uh, in that field because depending on which uh, aligner you will use and depending on what you have done, you will see different um, uh, field, but all the field will be described in the in the either of the of the BAM file. Question? Yes. So there's no mapping on the second read. You don't have any cigar string information. No cigar string corresponds to the mapping of this read. Right, but you also have the coordinates for the second read, right? Yeah, but the cigar string do not do not have any um, look at the at the second read. When you I will see. find when you will find in the in the file the second reads, so you will find another read with the same uh, read name, with maybe probably the dash one or dash two at the end if you mm -hmm. if you have it, then you will have the information of the second read. So when you will find the second read, so you will you will see uh, the same read name, you will find another flag which corresponds to how this one uh, uh, have been mapped and another set of position will correspond to this one, and then you will have quality and the cigar string of, of, the, of the mate. Uh, am I clear? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, and the, what was the 119 again? Was that the difference between those two? Which one? The 119 at the end. This one? Yes. It's the inter size. Okay. So it's, it's the distance of, between in your read. Thank you. Between May, May 1 and May 2. 
So that should be uh, what you'd get by subtracting the reference position from the second one, right? Like 882, yeah, that one and that one, we should get 119, right? By subtracting those two? No, not exactly. Because what you look is the first base of your read one and the first base of your read two, okay? And what the exercise is, is between the first base of your read one and the last base of your read two. Okay. So it's okay. why it's not directly the, the difference between uh, between both uh, numbers. But and you that's should, the, it could be pretty close. And I was gonna add that that's the sort of what they should be, should they be mapped against a normal genome and in a cancer genome, of course, all bets are off. Yeah. And we'll look at those later. So uh, a small note on the alignment. Um, so it's not always the case now that we have really um, sequencers that, that have really high throughput, but um, in many cases, and especially in, in cancer, when we want to have a really high coverage for the tumor, uh, it's, it's happened that um, you will generate a library from your tumor uh, sample, and you will sequence it multiple times to increase the coverage of your, of your, of your data. And it's really important when you do that, that you align um, each lane separately. So each um, output of your sequencer uh, for this um, library separately, and you add a read tag. So a read, what we call a read group. Um, so why we should do that? So first, it allows us to be more, um, to, be, to be faster, uh, because if, we, if I receive three different files, um, so if I if I sequence three times um, my, my my library, if I align them in, in parallel, I will gain in terms of time to complete the, the data. But what wh which is really more important is to treat to track where the read come from, um, because when you will merge everything together to get your full final BAM, uh, it's important that if you see something in your in your reads in your BAM that is unusual that you are able to track the unusual reads, where they come from. Are they coming from one specific uh, set of reads that you have received from the sequencer, or they are coming from all the different set of reads that you are received from your sequencer? In case when it's only one set of reads, it's probably, probably a, a, an artificial uh, pattern. When you see that this weird pattern is displayed in every, um, every read set, every, every uh, set of file you get from the sequencer, then you would say, oh, maybe it's more biological. So it's really important when you will, when you will discover something to be able to track back uh, the evidence of what you've discovered is uh, found in every of your samples. Uh, otherwise, it's not be a, it may be a, a false uh, positive uh, observation you are doing. Another important way, uh, important reason of doing that is that now most of the tools that we will use and you will use to do your analysis will ask you to have read group on your on your file. So after this step, we have generated alignment, but but as for sequencer, the aligner, as I say, is not perfect. As, as we say, the, the, we try to combine uh, speed and accuracy, so the, the alignment will not be perfect. So the main thing we need to do then is to uh, refine the alignment to make it better, uh, to again, try to reduce all the technicality, all the, the, the errors, all the possible, um, uh, possible, possible things that could create a false variant in your data. So the first thing that we that we are doing is to do uh, indel realignment. So why we are doing that? It's because um, when we do alignment, it's a kind of penalty game. So um, every uh, so having a, a mismatch, having a, a difference between the reference and your reads, cost a number of um, of points. Having a, a gap costs another a set of points, and usually. Um, having um, var variant or having um, like mismatch between the reference costs way less than having a gap in most of the alignment uh, process. So the aligner will tend to not create gaps uh, when we talk about DNA aligner. 
and sometimes in some region you will observe this kind of patterns where you see um, uh, a difference between the read and the re in many read and the reference, and you see another reference just on a, a few bases af uh, after. And in the same region, other reads show um, a gaps. So in that case, it, it's a really suspicious because you don't expect um, such a um, high amount of variation in a closed space. Usually, you, you, you expect to have variation um, in general on your, on, on your on, in, gener in the non-concert non, non sample every KB. In concert sample, it's, it's a bit less, but it, you don't expect to have three variation in, in 10 bases. Um, in that case, it's usually the sign that something went wrong in this, in this region. Uh, but that happened due to the, the fact of the penalty game of that the aligner is playing to, to find your, your best location. So the, the indirect realignment will uh, go over your, your genomes and your alignment and will look, try to identify all the region like that where it, the region looks suspicious. And then what it will do it will realign uh, the region, but using a different set of penalties for variant versus gaps. Try to um, to uh, uh, reinforce and, and be uh, and be uh, being more um, so, uh, prone to um, to alignment. And the idea is to try to change the alignment in some reads when uh, you have created false variant because you have not include a deletion. So that's the main purpose of, um, of, of this step. So it's a really important step. Uh, no, some people would tell me, yes, maybe it's not uh, useful to do it anymore because there, there, uh, there's um, variant colors that do it themselves. That's true, but not all the color will do that. So it's why I think it's still good to do it because uh, if you want to use a color that do not do uh, local realignment while it's calling, you will need to do it before. So it's why we're still doing it. What is really important is when we work in cancer, so we have usually normal and tumor, is to do it uh, in synchronization. So both sample together, because in your, in, your, um, in your data, the normal and tumor come from the same sample. So they share, I would say, probably 99.9% .9 of their variation. So they will share 99% Point nine percent of their um, uh, indels, and sometimes in, when you have region with indels, it's more harder to, to map. So you have less coverage. So by putting the two uh, band files together, so not you know, don't create a mix of the band file, but by, by giving the two band files together to the indel realignment tool, it will get even more information about the region and it will, it will create even more um, true realignment. So it's always good to do that. And also it's always good to give that because in the realignment have um, do when you have a, when you have a, a in Dell in your, in your, in your BAM file, the weight is right and you could put the in Dell here, you could put uh, there. So, there's a different way to mark deletion or insertion in the, in the BAM file. So the fact that you give the two uh, BAM together will ensure that the deletion at this position uh, or insertion is marked the same way be between the two um, BAM files. Uh, the last, um, not the last, I think, no, it's not the last. The second, the second um, uh, refinement that we do on the BAM file is to um, uh, do uh, marking uh, duplicates or removing duplicates. So uh, I already talked about that a bit before. So what are duplicates? So duplicates, it's um, when you have in your data um, several representation of the same initial DNA fragment. So what you want to do uh, when you do um, whole genome sequencing, you generate a lot of DNA fragment uh, so thousands of millions of DNA fragments, and you, you, you sample them, and you want to have, uh, as possible, only one representation of each DNA fragment. So, so it is, if you see several um, times the same uh, variation from the reference and your sample, and if all the reads come from different uh, DNA fragments, you, you, it means that all the difference you see are real, biological difference that you have been observed in your, in your data. 
So you don't want to have one fragment that is represented 20 times. Otherwise, if there's an error at the beginning uh, when you create this fragment, you will see 20 times the same error and it will be it will appear as a, as a variant where it just or another representation of an error. So you want that one fragment, one logical fragment give one read. So that the, the idea of duplicate is to, to, to look for this duplication of, of, of data and try to remove it. So mostly it will come from PCR, sometimes for optical clustering, but the, the, the ratio is really like, I would say 99% of the, of the duplicates come from PCR. So there's many ways to detect them. Um, the most efficient one is the positional approach and it's why we will um, we'll use uh, mostly in the, in the workshop. So why it is important to look at duplicates? As I said, here is an example of what you can observe in your, in your data. So if I'm looking at this position, I will see, oh, I've got uh, six evidence out of eight that there's a difference between my reference and my um, variant, my sample, sorry. So I will probably call that a variant. Now I do, um, I remove duplicates. Then all I, I notice that oh, all these reads are the same version of an initial fragment. So I'll know if I'm re removing all of them except one, if I'm only keeping one version of each linear fragment, I say, oh, I've got, a, I've got a difference to my reference, only one out of three. So now it's, it's really less likely that I will call a variant at this position. So, so it's really, I say, it's really important to reduce um, the number of false positives in your data to do this, um, this step. The last, um, uh, the last refinement we do on the BAM is, to, is what is called the base recalibration. So uh, why we do that? Because the base quality uh, is, used for, uh, is used for mapping, but is also used for variant calling. Um, and the different uh, sequencer uh, vendor try to inflate the value of the base quality in their reads. And if you look at the if, if you look at the data and if you do some kind of metrics looking at real where is a real variant or not, um, we can see that there are some um, common patterns that influence the variability of base quality. Uh, there's the position, there's the genomic context, and, and, and other type of of, um, uh, of technicalities that will influence the base quality. So the idea of the base recalibration is to look at each base and to look at how this base fit into the model of variation of base quality and to re-give uh, to, to this base the, what we expect is a more realistic base quality in order to just improve the, um, your base quality and then improve your uh, variant calling. So once you have done that, then you have high quality um, uh, a BAM file, and then you have a BAM file that will be ready to do variant calling. So I, I will not go further in the, how we touch the, 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 the BAM file because then it will be mod the next module that will focus on the variant calling. So I will stop that in, 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 in I will stop there in, in the pipeline, but before stopping, well, I, I would just would like to, to note that all along the process, what is really important is to take metrics. It's really, really important because each time uh, you will see something unusual in your data, uh, you will have to go back to your matrix file and to see, okay, is all my matrix file seems okay? And it, in that case, what, I, what I'm seeing as unusual, maybe a real biological unusual variant or, or phenomena, or is it something which is due to all the all, all the processing I, I made on my, on my on my read? Because each time you do a step, you you make a you make a choice. When you do the alignment, you make a choice about your penalty. When you trim, you make a choice about your best quality threshold. When you do your um, alignment refinement, you make some choice. And each time you, you make a choice, you usually have a, a cost to pay in terms of some read will be uh, removed, some read will be biased. And that will be noticed in the matrix. By looking at your matrix, you will be, you will be oh, I see that in my matrix, my inter size is uh, really, uh, really too small. So it's why I don't see, uh, I don't see, for example, insertion. Or my matrix is uh, have really bad alignment rates. So it's why uh, I see 
a lot of false positive in some specific regions. So you always have to go back before um, judging a, a, an unusual phenomena um, to metrics to confirm that your metrics are okay and you can um, interpret this, uh, this unusual observation as, an, as a variant. Uh, in terms of metrics, we'll see during the practical the different metrics, but there's one tool uh, we really like to use, um, which is called MultiQC, and uh, it's why I, I want to, to show it to, show to you. Uh, we will not use it uh, today in the practical, but it's a really efficient tool. You just run MultiQC on the folder, what you have run your analysis, and it's a kind of, it's a, a, a metrics aggregator that will um, that will be able to um, provide you all your metrics into one file. So it's really uh, easy after uh, after that when you have run multi QC to explore your metrics. So in, during the practical, we'll do it by looking directly in the file. But in general, when you have a, a, a real set of data with a lot of samples, using multi QC is really an, an advantage. So to conclude, uh, so. Today, I, I've tried to introduce you um, what are the, the main challenge uh, when we do cancer analysis um, and to really try to understand uh, what are the, the source of artifacts. So what could be linked to the sample? Uh, for example, if they are specific in your sample and specific, specific in, in cancer sample, what are the sources of, of errors that come from the technology, the mapping and everything, the sequencer? And then what are the, the I try to touch a bit what are the, the source of artifacts you can see due to the analysis. What I, it's correspond to what I tell you, when you do something, you, you, you make a choice and you have a cost to pay. So it's really important to understand that you will have a lot of artifact and a lot of error in your data and you, and you need to, to be aware of that and you need to understand uh, really how all the process uh, to generate your data is made in order to understand and to make the difference between biology and artifact. Uh, what is important to, to also um, uh, keep in mind is cancer are complex. Um, we talk most of the time about um, variant, and when we talk about variant, people think about uh, single nucleotide variant, but there's also copy number alter uh, alteration. Uh, there's also mutational burden, there's admixture. So, it's really complex and um, it's really challenging in terms of analysis, but it's really fun because um, uh, you will have a, a direct view of what the variant impact are. And um, so when you will be able to, to decipher all this complexity, you, you've got really a direct impact, which is usually uh, sometimes a bit more difficult to see when you need to have larger set of, of data, for example, in, in rare disease or so on. Um, here I, I focus more on the on the um, on the on the schema of on the design of using a tumor normal pair for uh, analysis. So this is done when you want to, to uh, work on somatic variant or when you want to look at uh, LOH. So a lo lot of uh, loss of heterozygosity. Uh, but in cancer, usually you you, you could be um, doing different way or different design. Um, like comparing DNA, DNA to RNA. In that case, we do that when we want to uh, focus and validate gene fusion, RNA editing, or allele specific expression. Or sometimes you do pre post treatment uh, when you want to measure how is the impact of a specific drug. Um, and you see all these challenges make things com complex. And it's why now, um, when we do the analysis, first we need to, uh, to use cancer specific tools. So this is really one of the main thing you need to, to, to remain. One of the main take up messages, don't use standard tools because otherwise uh, it could give you really um, um, uh, useless results. And the, the second thing is that now, and you will see it during the workshop, um, we tend to go more and more with a single cell approach of cancer because of purity, clonality, heterogeneity. Going at the cell level, at the cell genomic levels, um, really allow to um, get out of this um, uh, cancer specific uh, phenomena. So it's why you, you will see during the, the workshop and, and why if you work in cancer genomics, you will probably be exposed to single cell um, uh, analysis. 
So that's all for my talk. Um, I would like to thank people from C3G that work with me on cancer and other collaborators that helped me to, um, to, to develop the pipeline.